Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now today I'll be building the Tamiya 135th scale Sherman EZ8. Uh, now I was looking for a Sherman as in I built one yet and there were a lot of options um, because it's a very popular tank um, but the Tamiya kit first of all it's Tamiya you know their stuff is always high quality and second of all it was only like $35 relatively cheap uh, for a 135th scale tank so I decided to pick it up from there. I'll, I'll put a link to that in the description of the video. I began the build by starting to work on the chassis assembly. I'm not sure if it's actually called a chassis on a tank. I'm not an expert tank builder. But I began working on that first of all. The parts in this kit, very nice. No flashing. Typical Tamiya quality. Everything fit together like a glove. Really nothing was wiggly at all. The molds are very nice and there was a lot of detail in the parts. There are these little rubber bushings that um, are placed in some areas of the tank uh, to uh, make it fit better. So when the turret comes on, so it's not wiggling around everywhere, there's a little rubber piece to keep it from lifting up easily. I then started to assemble the running gear. Um, it was a bit of a repetitive process, as you can tell. Pretty much just gluing the same thing six times. But it really wasn't that bad. After that was done, I proceeded to glue in the road wheels onto the running gear. It's a pretty explanatory process. I went ahead and started to glue the road wheels or the um, running gear assembly on the tank. Now, Max Deschatel, I'm not sure if you pronounce, I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly. I probably did not. But he recommends uh, waiting to attach the running gear till after you have painted all of the road wheels, and I can definitely see how that would make it much easier to assemble it and paint it. So, uh, definitely do that. Don't attach the running gear until you are finished painting it and the rest of the tank. Um, so yeah, I definitely would have done that if I would have seen the comment sooner. I then went around the tank and started finishing up um, all the little details, adding the hatches, uh, grab handles, lights, stuff like that.
After the chassis was done, I proceeded to assemble the turret. One thing I liked was that the top half of the turret came in its own separate bag. I thought that was very nice, um, even though it wasn't necessarily necessary. I just thought it was a nice touch to show that Tammy actually cared somewhat about the quality of your parts. Now the barrel has a small seam that needs to be removed um, in the middle of the mold and that's easily done using scraping a hobby blade across the surface. You can also just sand it down as well. The hatch can either be placed in the open or closed position depending on if you're going to add the figure or not. I'm adding this in a diorama later on in a few videos, and I have the hatch open so that the commander can be sticking out. After the turret was complete, I placed it on the model. I just had to find the key, and it just slots right in. I added a little, a few of the jerry cans that came in the kit. Um, I forgot to put on the handles in this photo, but they're there on the handles on top of the jerry cans and when that was done I went to the painting. Now I decided to use some AK um, olive drab. I was looking for some paint that would come very quickly. I realized that I didn't actually have any olive drab. I've never built a tank that needed to be painted in olive drab before so it's the one paint I probably don't have. So I had to order some. And I gotta say this paint works very well. It's very thin paint. You can't go hosing it down on the model or you're gonna get lots of runs. It's not gonna uh, it's not gonna stick well. So a few light coats and that was good enough for me. There was no orange peel anywhere on the tank after this paint had dried. I was very impressed with that. I'll put a link to this paint in the description of the video if you would like to get some yourself. After the paint had dried, I was very happy, so I decided to move on to the weathering processes. I went ahead with some chocolate brown and dabbed it on with a old uh, sponge that I had lying around to simulate chipped paint in the areas where the paint would have chipped deep enough that it would have gone down to the metal and that metal would have rusted. And I was just gently applying this using the sponge. I did the same on the turret. Next I went in with some with some of the olive drab base color. The one thing I did is I mixed a tiny bit of white in there and I dabbed this along the surface as well. Now this is supposed to simulate areas where the paint would have chipped a tiny bit or it would have been faded, but not fully got onto the metal yet. After that, I used some black paint and a, a few drops of floor polish as a weathering wash and I brushed this over the model and gently dabbed it with a paper towel. I'm not wiping it, note that I'm not wiping it, I'm just dabbing it off. The dabbing helps to add some variation uh, in the paint, make it look more realistic and weathered. And it really helps with the overall look of the model. One thing you must note though is it does darken down the paint quite a bit. So if you don't want your paint darkened down, if you don't want to have um, a weathered Sherman, I would probably skip this step. I then went ahead with some uh, black gray and painted all of the tool on the tank.
And I also painted the shovels, axes, and various stuff like that. I then went ahead with some Vallejo chocolate brown um, and used that to simulate the wooden handles of the shuffle and the axe and the hammer as well. I forgot to add the decals, so I wouldn't recommend adding them on this late. Um, I would have added them on as soon as the painting process was over. So I had to go over with the weathering techniques over them a little bit because they had not been weathered at all, they looked very shiny. Now the kit does include rubber tracks. What I did first was I just went ahead and spray painted them black using my airbrush. And then while they dried, I went ahead with some of the same gray black we were using to paint the, uh, paint the tools and I painted the rubber sections of the road wheels. Again, it would have been easier if I had just left these off. So if you are building the tank, um, definitely leave the running gear running gear assemblies off of the model until you are finished painting them. I then glued on the tracks and attach the turret. After that was done, I went ahead with some a mixture of mud or dirt garden soil. Um, Mod Podge matte and a few drops of black paint to give it a little bit of a darker color. And I dabbed this over the surface, over the areas along the um, along the tracks, the treads, uh, anywhere where mud would have splashed up as it's driving along muddy roads. I added it along the fenders as well in some areas. And that was the tank done. Then I went on to the person. So the figure included this kid as a commander, um, very nice. Um, they molded it in gloss plastic, which I thought was a little strange. It made it a little harder for the paint to stick correctly, but it was okay. Now what I did first was I took some black paint, def uh, just flat black paint, any black paint will work, just sprayed this on a nice uh, thin even coat over the whole surface of the figure. Sorry about the light here. I and turn on my lamp and then I went ahead with some flat white and just sprayed this over the top of the figure so the whole idea with this is we want to give it some nice dark shades um, and the white paint adds as the sun so you're gonna do it um, as you're looking down on the figure not looking up so you only spray it from one direction then I took some watered down chocolate brown paint and a little bit of yellow I believe as well it was in there and I, this is acting as a wash, so it'll fill in the darker colors and leave the lighter areas just raised. And I brushed this over the clothes, or his jacket. I did this in a few multiple coats, each time getting a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, depending. And after a few coats, um, it was really starting to darken up and looked really nice. I then went ahead with some German, uh, I think it's dark green, I'm not sure I'll put the paint. Uh, in the video later on, but I watered this down as I had done with the previous colors and painted his helmet. <laughs> I 
After that was done, I went ahead with some chocolate brown, mixed in a bit of water, a little bit of floor polish, and I brushed this over the model. Now what this is supposed to do, as I had accidentally added too much paint previously, um, this is going to settle in the darker areas and not touch the lighter areas, so hopefully it'll give a nice look. Once that was done, I accidentally painted the hands a flesh tone when they are supposed to be wearing gloves. I fixed that in the moment, um, but this is just some white, red, and a little bit of yellow paint mixed in together to add this nice skin tone. And I realized that the hands should not be painted um, with a flesh color. Instead, he was wearing gloves, so I repainted it with a dark yellow color. Now here was the finished guy. I went ahead, uh, painted the little black area, his radio black, and I also glued on the goggles that were included with the kit. And I'm really happy with how it came out. I think he's probably my best figure, or I guess half a figure, that I've ever done. So I was really happy with that. And I just glued him in with some super glue. Oh, and that's the finished model. I really do hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please be sure to hit that like button. You don't have to subscribe if you don't want to. It really does help me out though. And if you don't choose to subscribe or hit the like button, I really do hope you enjoy my videos. Um, next video, next week will be, or next video I should say, we'll be building a half ton truck to go along with the tank. And the week after that, we'll be building a diorama. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. Bye. Have a modeling.